ഓപ്പറേറ്റീവ് വെജൈനൽ ഡെലിവറി ഇൻ ഓപ്പറേറ്റീവ് വെജൈനൽ ഡെലിവറി വി കംപ്ലീറ്റ് ദ സെക്കൻഡ് സ്റ്റേജ് ഓഫ് ലേബർ വിത്ത് ദ ഹെൽപ്പ് ഓഫ് ഇൻസ്ട്രമെൻറ്റ് ദ ടു മേജർ ഇൻസ്ട്രമെൻറ്റ്സ് ദാറ്റ് ആർ ഇൻ ദ അർമമെൻറ്റേറിയം ഓഫ് ദ ഓബ്സ്ട്രട്ടീഷൻ ഈസ് ദ ഫോസപ്സ് ആസ് വെൽ ആസ് ദ വാക്വം എക്സ്ട്രാക്ടർ ഫോസപ്സ് സ്റ്റാർട്ട് വാസ് ഇൻവെൻറ്റഡ് റൈറ്റ് ഇൻ ദ ഫിഫ്റ്റീൻ തൗസൻഡ് ബി സി ബൈ ദ ചേംബർലിൻ ഗ്രൂപ്പ് ഓഫ് ഫാമിലി ഇറ്റ് വാസ് കെപ്റ്റ് എസ് എ ഫാമിലി സീക്രട്ട് ഫോർ ത്രീ ജനറേഷൻസ് ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ് വാസ് ബീങ് യൂസ്ഡ് ഫോർ ദ റോയൽ ഫാമിലി ഹെൻസ് ദേ വെർ അപ്ഗ്രേഡ് ടു ദ പോസ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് എ റോയൽ ഓബ്സ്ട്രട്ടീഷൻ but in the latter part of 18th century and the 19th century only different versions of the forceps came into practice at that time instrumental delivery was a very attractive art because the morbidity and mortality with cesarean section was so high that everybody resorted to instrumental delivery but now the paradigm shift has occurred and we find less of instrumental delivery or instrumental delivery going as a lost art and cesarean section is in a skyrocketing rate so now the who has gone to the tra- trend tendency of reducing the cesarean section and how to practice the art of obstetric operative deliveries coming to the forceps this is an outlet wrigley's forceps forceps has three parts a blade shaft and a handle the blade is fenestrated to produce less trauma to the fetal head in the outlet forceps the shaft is very short and this is the handle the lock is a sliding type of lock earlier we had high forceps mid cavity forceps and as well as outlet forceps now the only forceps that is being practiced in modern obstetrics is the outlet or the wrigley's forceps the mid cavity forceps as well as the forceps that is applied for the after coming head that is the piper's forceps has a long shaft in mid cavity you have the milnimurase axis traction forceps where you are not giving traction on to the handle but on to the axis that collides with the axis of the fetal head indications for outlet forceps is it can be either an indicated forceps or a prophylactic forceps indicated means when the second stage is getting prolonged there is maternal exhaustion or when there is fetal distress prophylactic forceps is when you are applying for a preeclampsia heart disease when you want to cut short the second stage of labor like in a v back uh, in such conditions they are prophylactic forceps coming to prerequisites for applying a forceps the acog guidelines of for the prerequisites is that so bladder should be empty cervix should be fully dilated you should see the fetal scalp in an unparted labia so without separating the labia itself the scalp has to be seen no pole should be palpable per abdomen and uh, the rotation should be complete consent of the patient also has to be obtained now coming to the proper technique of applying an outlet forceps first of all we have to give a pudendal block anesthesia the pudendal block anesthesia is given either the transperineal root or the transvaginal root you palpate the ischial spines ischial spines are palpated and one finger breadth medial to the ischial spines the sacrospinous ligament is pierced here either the needle goes through the vagina in a transvaginal approach or in a transperineal approach it goes midway through the anal aperture and the ischial tuberosity so after having infiltrated both sides with 1% silocaine 5 ml each side you go on to put the episiotomy and some prefer even without an episiotomy at this stage and now a dummy application of the forceps is done outside the body and the r- blade on the left side of the obstetrician left hand of the obstetrician is actually the right blade because the patient is facing the obstetrician thus the blade on the right side right hand side of the obstetrician is taken and the left blade is now held like a spoon and two fingers of the right hand is of the obstetrician is kept in the left posterior quadrant of the pelvis and the blade is gently sweep through the posterior quadrant where you have space and is kept as the left to blade the blade uh, handle is depressed handle is depressed and it is held in this position right blade is now taken in the right hand 
and the two fingers of the left hand is kept in the right posterior quadrant of the pelvis and gently sweep to the right side of the pelvis and once it is a proper application there won't be any difficulty in locking the instrument there won't be any difficulty in locking the instrument here once it is properly applied the sagittal suture is in the ap diameter of the outlet the two blades catch hold of the two parietal bones and in an outlet forceps you can see only the tip of the blades at the sides and uh, the posterior fontanelle will be just below the pubic symphysis at this level first a downward traction is given so that the subocciput will hitch against the pubic symphysis a forward traction is given and then a lift out or an extension is being done after having delivered the head the two blades are disma generally dismantled and taken out and the rest of the delivery is completed maternal morbidity can be it can in extend the episiotomy it can produce vaginal laceration it can produce cervical tear colporexis you find more of maternal injury with uh, forceps whereas less of fetal injury with forceps now fetal morbidity can be Uh, kifal hematoma subgallial hematoma intracranial hemorrhage some conjunctival hemorrhage and the advantage is of forceps is that once the instrument is applied and locked it takes no time because you don't wait for maternal forces to act in in bringing out the baby so in fetal distress heart disease and all where you don't want the maternal effort and you want it to be very quick it this is the ideal instrument it can be applied in vertex but thing is that it should be either fully rotated or near fully rotated where it is short of 45 degrees you can apply this by doing a digital rotation or a manual rotation which i have clearly uh, told to you in the occipito posterior presentation video now we have other forceps unfortunately we don't our department doesn't have the rotational forceps rotational forceps is a key lens forceps here you have got an anterior and a posterior blade rather than the right and the left blade we will just show you how you are going to apply this with the uh, with the outlet you cannot never use an outlet for a key lens so there is an anterior and a posterior whenever there is a deep transverse arrest we will just show you how you apply an anterior and a posterior blade in a keelens forceps in the keelens forceps actually to hold on to the biparietum you have an anterior blade and a posterior blade only so the anterior blade if it is taken from the posterior quadrant and sweeped over the fetus face it is a wandering method whereas in a classical method what you will do is that you uh, negotiate the convexity facing the pubic symphysis in the lower uterine segment you turn it as a 180 degree and then the posterior blade is applied directly after having caught hold of the anterior and the posterior blade is locked so that we catch hold of the biparietal diameter now see the sagittal suture is in the transverse diameter this is attempt attempted only in deep transverse arrest without cpd and in modern obstetrics nobody is practicing it because we have another alternative using a vacuum extraction which does an auto rotation just for a theoretical purpose only we are showing this so after having locked the it is rotated understood now the anterior and the posterior blade becomes a right and a left blade now it is just pulled out like an outlet forceps another forceps that is in practice is the piper's forceps where you are applying the forceps to the after coming head of a breech here it has a long shaft the baby is carried elevated up so that more space is made in the posterior quadrant of the pelvis and the piper's forceps is applied this also we have clearly shown in the video of breech presentation now a few words about trial forceps and failed forceps when as a part of trial labor we are applying a forceps in the ot where we are trying whether the delivery can be completed vaginally here if you cannot apply uh, lock the blades or you cannot do a proper application the procedure is abandoned 
if the instrument can be properly applied and locked only we proceed ahead with trial forceps so the first pull should disimpact the fetus second pull should crown it out and the third pull should extend and bring out the baby failed forceps is when you cannot negotiate the forceps you cannot uh, lock the forceps or you it comes out with a morbid baby or with severe vaginal or cervical lacerations Ma'am Strong brought the instrument vacuum extraction which came into practice from 1953. At that time it was that instrument with the, where the vacuum force comes at the central part where that is also same used as the traction rod and the handle. So metallic cups we have got three size, small size, medium size and here we don't have a large size cup. Large size cup goes to more than 9 centimeters. So now the newer version of this is the silastic cup as well as the uh, kiwi hand operated cups. The advantage with the silastic and the kiwi cups is uh, it produces very less trauma to the fetal scalp compared to that of a metallic cup. There are various versions of the metallic cup where we have got an OP cup where the negative pressure tubing is on the side or the pull is on the side here actually the pull is on the central part of the cup and not on the side in the op cup it is on the side of the uh, cup and now we will be able to understand auto rotation in an op cup which is called a bird's cup also Indications are almost same like that of a vacuum extraction only. It is for either maternal indication or fetal indication. But here you cannot apply it on a face. You cannot apply it on a preterm. Uh, these are the disadvantage. But the advantage is that you can do apply it on a transverse position where the instrument will do an auto rotation by itself. And you can apply with a near full dilatation also. So the prerequisites is that cervix should be at least more than 8 centimeters dilated. The sagittal suture can remain in any place but the head has to be in plus 2 or plus 3 station and there should be no pole palpable per abdomen. You identify all these things and if it is fully rotated you can Keep the cup at the flexion point. The flexion point of the cup is in the sagittal suture just beneath the posterior fontanel or 3 cm from the posterior fontanel. Try and large not to avoid on to the area of the anterior fontanel. The here actually initially we after having applied the cup we feel all around whether the cervix is there and once the cervix is not there uh, the vacuum is created either by an electric pump or a foot pump. In Kiwi, it is a hand operated pump. It is a hand, it's a hand operated pump. Now, we will show you because the fetal skull is here so small that we will show you with the small metallic cup. Once it is applied to the flexion point, the obstetrician which catch hold of the traction rod and the two fingers of the left hand just grips the cup and keeps keeps the cup in position the two fingers keeps the cup in position so with the thumb she will be pushing on to the cup and with the two fingers will guide her whether the cup is slipping initially we increase the pressure to 0.2 kilo uh, Vacuum pressure to 0.2 kg per centimeter square and later it is quickly rapidly increased to 0.8 kg per centimeter square. The initial thought was that a slow build of pressure was required for the artificial caput to form that is the chignon to form. But now it is proved beyond doubt that you can have a rapid increase in size. But the time taken will be more because here you pull the pull on to the um, fetal skull or the scalp only during contraction that is why it is of not that use in a fetal distress or in a heart disease where the maternal pushing effort has to be there but nowadays all of us prefer the silastic cup and that is at application just like an umbrella you fold and keep it on to the flexion point 
create the vacuum and first pull is downward so that the occiput comes down next pull is parallel and the third pull lifts out or extends the head and brings out the head the flexion point is over the sagittal suture 3 cm below the posterior fontanelle and this is the flexion point inappropriate application at the parietal prominence and all will produce a slippage of the instrument the advantage with the forceps uh, vacuum extraction is that there is an ease of application compared to forceps where the expertise is required identify the blade and if it is not properly done there is more of maternal trauma whereas vacuum extraction there is an ease of application and uh, there is no difficulty in applying so uh, even a less experienced person can also apply a vacuum extraction just like you have a trial forceps as well as a trial uh, failed forceps here also you have a trial vacuum as well as a failed vacuum also that is as a part of trial labor you apply the vacuum in the OT to see whether the delivery can be completed as a vaginal delivery is a trial vacuum and here the first pull again has to dislodge second pull has to crown it up to the perineum and the third pull has to bring out the baby the force exerted will be only from the uh, wrist and not the elbow so you should not exert much force the reason for slippage is because you exert much force or it can be inadequate vacuum being created so prior to the procedure itself you see that the vacuum is created by applying the cup onto your palm so that the negative pressure is okay now sequential instrument application is that or first you apply a vacuum bring down the head and complete the process by a forceps so one instrument is applied one after the other the place for a high vacuum is the second of a twin where you find you apply the instrument at a higher level here because the weight of one twin will be lesser than that of a single ton you are taking advantage of that to do a high application so the advantage of a vacuum is it does auto rotation disadvantage is you cannot apply it to a preterm head and time is taken more failure chances are more those are the disadvantage with a vacuum extraction but the advantage is less expertise is required in applying this instrument